Hello! Today is part two of our series on PDF accessibility. Last time we reviewed tagging, reading order, artifacting, lists, table of contents, and links. I recommend you watch that video before viewing this one. In this lesson, we'll cover simple data tables, alt text, color contrast, and forms. Note that we'll be using the same document as before. Let's start. First up, tables. Tables are often used in two ways, for layout purposes and to display data. The use of layout tables should be limited as they can cause navigational issues for assistive technology users. Data tables are most commonly used and are broken up into two categories, simple and complex. For the purposes of this video series, we'll only review simple tables. Simple data tables have a one column header and or one row header to each cell ratio. The tags for an accessible data table include table, table row nested underneath or TR, then nested underneath the table rows are table headers TH and table data TD. Keep in mind, within a simple table, most of the time your column headers will show within the first table row tag as each table reads from left to right, top to bottom. As we expand each table row cell, we can tell the header row tags are missing. We only have TD tags. Simply right click the corresponding tag to open the context menu and choose properties. From the type drop down menu, select table header cell, then close. Repeat this for each tag that should be a table header. Also note, if you've created an accessible table in Word, then converted it to PDF, these tags should automatically populate correctly, though you should still review your tag tree to validate your structure. Next, let's review images in alternative text. There are three types of images, simple, decorative, and complex. Simple images are your standard photos and other images that are used for visual appeal, but also relevant to the content. Decorative includes images that are used for visual appeal, but do not convey any meaning to the content, such as clip art. This type of image must become an artifact as to not be disruptive to those using assistive technology. Complex images include graphs, charts, and process flows. These images convey meaning to content, but may require a bit more description than a simple image. In this case, you would utilize a caption or for a more lengthy description, reference an appendix in the alt text, where you could then fully describe the image. Remember, for complex images, data can't just be summarized. Everyone must have access to all the same information. Referencing this document, we have three images. The arrow, which is decorative, the bathtub, which is simple, and the bath chair, which is simple also. The author also decided to include a caption with this image to give it a bit more detail. If you've converted an accessible document with alt text into PDF, your alt text should already be associated with the images tag. To, to check this, select the corresponding tag, open the context menu, and choose Properties. Under the Alternative Text field, you should notice the alt text. If messaging is not there, be sure to fill it in. Alt type bath chair, then close. Remember, alt text for simple images should be concise and never start with wording such as photo of bathtub, for example. AT will already communicate that to the user. As for our first image, which is decorative, it would be better if AT skipped over this tag. So let's artifact it. On the corresponding tag, open the context menu and choose change tag to artifact, then OK. Now color contrast. You should always test your PDFs for color contrast in case you need to make an adjustment. Because PDF is an end product format, it's best if you adjust your colors in the original document. However, PDF does provide tools to change most text colors if there is an issue, though you can't change background colors in PDF. You can download a color contrast analyzer off the internet easily and for free. Remember, we need to test anywhere there is text and its surrounding background. For example, Let's test the green lettering of the title with the white background. The ratio should be at least 4 to 5 to 1. Just take our dropper tool, hover over the title, and select. So the contrast is at least 4 to 5 to 1. This combination passes, but we should always strive for a higher ratio where possible. 
Now let's test our H2 headings. Open our contrast analyzer, select the dropper, select the color. It seems this color does not meet the ratio we're looking for. To change it, go to Edit, Edit Text and Images. A pane will appear on the right. Highlight your text and select the colorful square. We'll choose this dark blue. When you're done, close the pane. Lastly, we're going to review the basics of how to make an accessible form. Please keep in mind, forms are highly customizable in PDF. I'm moving to a different document to show you an example. However, we will only review the basics of form creation. Here's an event request form that I've made. However, it would be much better if this form was clickable and I could fill in the fields with text. PDF provides everything you need to create an accessible, fillable form. To start, go to Tools, Prepare Form. This tool detected what it thinks are form fields. As I had checkboxes on my Word document, the form tool is picking them up. But we have other questions that need a field. At the top of the toolbar, there are several symbols. You can add a text box, a checkbox, radio button, create drop down and scroll lists, buttons, images, and so on. We want people to be able to write in their responses as well as select radio buttons, so we'll add the appropriate boxes to the remaining questions. To do this, select the text field button and place it next to the appropriate question, next to title of presentation. A prompt will appear asking you to name the field. No worries about that just yet. Simply finish placing all your text boxes. Note that you can expand these fields to your desired size. Do the same with the radio buttons. Once you have your form fields placed, you'll need to name each one. For example, for the title of presentation field, right-click the field and select Properties. Under the General tab, in the Name field, type Title of Presentation. Copy and paste the same text into the tooltip. You want each name to be descriptive. If you have two fields with the same name, they will both populate the same info. We don't want that. Make each field unique. Now, if I jump down to the last question, the answer choices include radio buttons. Radio buttons are a pretty common format for multiple choice forms. An important thing to note with radio buttons is that each answer choice must reference the group name. For example, for question nine, my group name is host. However, when naming these, go to the Properties menu. I would name the first one Host RSA Staff. Of course, copy and then paste into the tooltip. Close. The second choice, if I open the Properties menu, would be Host Guest Speaker. Copy and paste into the tooltip. You can also make any field required by selecting the required checkbox to the bottom of the properties pane, if you so choose. However, if you make a field required, make sure you describe that in the tooltip. For example, if title of presentation was a required field, I would type required dash title of presentation. If I open the properties menu on the detected fields, as we recall, the checkboxes were pre-filled. Ensure that the content is accurate. Once you've gone through all the fields, you can test your form. Select the preview button at the top right. The last step of creating forms is placing the proper tags into your tag tree. I'll show you an example with question one. If you look at the tag tree, the answer choices for question one are both listed as P tags. We'll need to add a new tag under the P tag. Right click on the tag to open the context menu. Select New Tag. Choose Form from the drop down menu. Select OK. Now carefully move your form tag in line with the P tag. Now open the context menu for your new form tag and choose Find. On the drop down, select Unmarked Annotations, then select Find. The corresponding text will be highlighted on your document. If it's correct, choose Tag Element then close. If you open your form tag, you should have an OBJR tag. Repeat this for every form field. 
The very last item on our to-do list is to formally name our PDF document. Go to File, Properties. Under the Description tab, fill in your title. I'll write Event Request Form. Then go to the Initial View tab. Then under the Show drop-down, select Document Title. Then select OK. If you don't do this, typically systems will default to the file name, which can sometimes be confusing. And that is it. PDF has so many tools and customizable features that can really make your documents both professional and accessible. Be sure to view our other videos on baking and remediating accessible Word and PowerPoint documents.